All right, so we're talking about Battalion Combat Series Last Blitzkrieg. I wanted to do a, an overview here of the units, uh, the counters, and so forth, and their capabilities. Um, this game, as opposed to a lot of other games I've played, and I've played a few, um, has a an interesting characteristic in which every counter is a, a piece unto itself. Um, in a lot of other games you'll see, right, there's a, an infantry brigade or a, a Falschmajager squad or, a, right, engineer company or whatever, and they'll all sort of be the same, right? So you got your uh, 467 first line German infantry squads, your 838 German engineer squads, your 666 American first line squads, blah, blah, blah. This game is completely different, so throw all that out the window. Um, in, in battalion combat series, every counter, um, which generally represents a battalion, is an of its own. It generally, uh, will have its own numbers and will be its own piece. Now that being said, um, there are good, if you will, and bad, or I guess the better term is effective and ineffective divisions. So let's just uh, grab a piece and dig in here. So if we grab or look at this guy, the third of the fifth of the third Fallschirmjäger division. Um, the first thing you'll note is this up arrow. This is called the assault uh, arrow. Um, units in this game need this to engage in basically in hex-to-hex -hex combat. Units without this are unable to attack an adjacent hex in... Um, normal combat all right this uh, little number here is actually one of the most important numbers on a unit this is their action rating which is uh, an approximation of their their training their capability their experience and uh, basically just how capable the 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 unit is so they vary from pretty much one to five. Um, so this unit that we have in hand, this two, is fairly weak. Um, I think if we scroll up here, here's a one. So he's even weaker, right? Um, if we go down, you have, uh, this is a armored Battalion in Conf Group Piper, six and seventh of the first. They got a five, so they're those guys are pretty motivated and pretty hard ass. Okay. Next, going back to our original piece, is your movement. So he has a movement of four. Movement in this game works pretty much like most games. You have movement points, you move through hexes. They cost what they cost. Um, an interesting characteristic in this game system is uh, units often have two sides. So uh, there's sort of this march side and there's this combat side. Uh, different people have commentated and called them different things. Combat and march is good enough for me, whatever. But you'll note that um, if we flip him over, right, he goes down to a one action rating, he has no assault arrow, and he's got an eight move, so he can move faster, but he's ineffective in combat, right? If we take uh, our armored battalion here and flip him, you'll note he actually gets... Uh, stronger, right? 
And so now's probably a good time to talk about this number. This is the AV rating, or the armor rating, of the unit. You'll note these Falschmanjagers, or whatever the hell, don't have it. That's because there's no tanks here. This is tanks. Okay? So they have an armor rating. However, they don't have an assault arrow. So these guys can't actually attack an adjacent hex in normal combat. That's just the way the system is, and such is life, right? There's, and we'll get to that, there's like seven different kinds of combat between units, I think. Six or seven, I don't know. Anywho, um, these guys are not capable of doing one. So let's flip them back. So your movement type is based on the color of your movement factor. So for these guys, they have this white uh, movement factor. So they're foot based. Okay. Um, a red is what's called tactical or basically tracked. And then uh, if we go back here, you have this see-through uh, movement factor. That's what's known as truck. Okay, and so if you pull up the movement chart, right, you have leg, you have tactical, and you have truck. And the different movement factors for moving through. But, uh, I mean, to make a long story short, here in the Ardennes, um, any of these troop types that are not moving along these various roads, even of the shitty quality, quality roads, it's there. You're not going to get very far, very fast. Um, period. On the other hand, um, if you're moving along, say, Something like this. I believe this is a, what do they call it, a major road? Primary road, right? So a tactical is half. So theoretically, this guy can move 32 hexes along a primary road. Um, 32 hexes is a hell of a long way. So if we zoom out, and this is just our tactical map, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32, say. Um, this is as far as, or almost as far as Conf Group Piper got over the course of the entire campaign. So... Um, troops do have the ability to move very far, just sort of situationally dependent, right? Because as you will find very quickly, um, it matters on the opposition you're facing. Okay. Um... The next thing, the AV rating of a unit has a color. Red basically means these are fully operational um, tank units. They can do pretty much all capabilities that a tank unit can do. Uh, you got guys like this with a see-through AV rating. They are less capable on the attack, but fine on the defense. And uh, I think, let's see, another example there. And there's some other examples you'll see through the game, but again, like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, um, 
this is definitely a game where in which each counter has very much its own capabilities, and so you you need to examine each counter. Is kind of where I'll leave that. Um, let's go into a couple kind of unique counter types. So I scooted this counter, uh, or both of these counters. I really just want to grab this guy. Let's okay. Let's just look at him. So Speets, he's a uh, He's basically an armored reconnaissance in Piper's conf group. He has a 3 AV rating, he has a 5 action rating, and he has an attack arrow. So he has both an AV and an attack arrow. This is a, a rare and unique kind of unit known as a duel, um, which can actually do a lot of cool stuff. These, these guys are pretty awesome. Um, but you'll have to note um, in this number here that I'm going to discuss now is the steps. So uh, steps is basically how much punishment this unit can take before it's uh, pulled off the battlefield. And so generally in uh, combat engagements one or both sides will take step losses and that will be reflected by uh, right decrease step and if you decrease step right so at some point you have no more steps and you're dead so that unit gets pulled off the map so that's another thing to think about on the counters. Um, so there's a couple special sort of counters. Each, right, so so in uh, Battalion Combat Series, there's the notion of a formation, and a formation is generally a division. So a division is made up of battalions, and so those battalions translate directly into the units that you have control over. Each of these are basically battalions within the formation. Um, so the formation, the division, or the formation, uh, has an HQ. The HQ has um, a couple of different characteristical numbers on it. It has, in the up left, uh, its command radius. And... Uh, Vassal is pleasantly uh, happy to provide my command radius as an overlay on the map here. Um, this is important because basically the units within a formation are going to want to begin an activation within the command radius of the HQ. This is where you get into the higher order of how the game works. Um, so, right, units of a, of a formation can't just run willy-nilly all over the map and do whatever the hell they want. They need to be somewhat close to their divisional HQ, as makes obvious sense in the real-world sense, right? Um, the other important number on an HQ is uh, over here on the right of the symbol is their inherent artillery amount. In this case, it's a 1, which is actually fairly weak. Um, if we shut that off, we go look at the fir third Falschman Jager, they got 3, right? So Piper has very little inherent firepower, artillery firepower. Um, when you activate a formation, you flip the counter and it goes to this side. Um, this actually is... Uh, something I didn't notice at first, but HQs have movement, um, but it's on their backside. It's kind of odd, in my opinion, but anywho. Um, so, 
your HQ is also a unit that can move, um, so it has that movement. The last uh, special unit within a formation I think we need to discuss is these guys, which are your supply trains. So, right, at the end of the day, the division charges forward and knocks in heads, and there's an HQ, hopefully a couple of hexes or so behind, directing uh, the knocking of heads. But then behind the HQ is the supply train, where in which uh, up come the bullets and the bombs and the spam and so on and so forth to feed the troops. And the distance from the HQ to the supply train is important, as well as the route from the HQ to the supply train and the supply train off the map. And uh, we'll discuss this in a, the next tutorial, but these all factor in on the capability of a formation to actually do anything. And so, um, this. So, so with these numbers in hand and the knowledge of what you can see, you begin to understand that various formations or divisions are of vastly differing value or vastly differing uh, efficiency or effectiveness, if you will. Um, value is the wrong word. So if you take the 326 volt grenadiers here, right, they have two as their action ratings. Here's even a one. These guys are real heroes. Um, they do have this support, which helps, but all in all, this is not a terribly useful, effective, efficient uh, division formation, right? We have the 277th Volks Grenadier here. We got a bunch of twos, 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 right? So again, this is not not a very hot division. And they're up against these Americans here, the first of the 393rd and the third of the 393rd, the 99th Infantry Division. These guys are threes. Not a super amount of difference, but these dudes are entrenched, right? Prepared defense, and they're in the forest. So. I mean, these Americans are just kind of hanging out in the forest, in the snow, in trenches, uh, waiting for these kind of uh, noob Germans to attack them. And historically, I mean, they did. The Germans did and suffered, uh, you know, horrendous losses. Unfortunate. Um, so now you got the 12th. 12th Volks Grenadier. This is a threes, fours. This is a m much more competent division. They're up against threes. Again, the 99th division, and so um, we'll get into that in my next tutorial. But um, Piper's division or Conf Group, these guys are all pretty much kick ass. Um, a very solid unit that's kind of going to be the punch. We got the third Falschmanjager. These guys are twos. Again, pretty mediocre. Um, coming up on the rear is the rest of the 1st SS Division. Those guys are pretty good. Um, these guys are. I believe historically these are like guys on bicycles and stuff like that. Pretty good, but kind of slow. Um, behind the 277th Volks Grenadier, we have the 12th SS Panzer Division. It's actually uh, 
somewhat competent division. Um, it's got some definite armor components, which can definitely provide some punch. Yeah, so that's uh, the unit overview.